All right, as we get ready to move to this next part, I want you guys to do one thing for me. A lot of you received this declaration as you came in. Please make sure you have signed it, okay? I am in agreement with the declaration, principles, concepts, and fundamental truths set forth in the shopping annuity assessment. I'm committed to executing all the activities contained within the shopping annuity assessment as a demonstration of my commitment. And it goes on. But what I want to do is I want to get a picture. Can, can someone show me how you do that where you take a wide one like this? Yeah, would you do it? That would be, what'd you say? A panorama. Yeah. All right, I need someone to help me. <laughs> All right, so everybody sign them. Hold them up. Hold them up. Be proud. Be proud. Help people in the back. Let's go. Let's go. Hold them up. All right. Now don't move. All right. Don't move. One, two, three. Oh, wait a second. Oh. <laughs> Press B. B. There. All right. All right, one more time. All right, here we go. Don't move. Is <laughs> anyone over 35 who can do this? <laughs> One, two, three. One, two, three. Here, here we go. No, here. All right. All right. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. So, <laughs> been great so far, right? A lot of things we've picked up, but, and we've talked a lot about, you know, being able to recruit, about, obviously about the shopping annuity, about customers, about different areas of retailing. But w one of the things I want to make sure we talk about is follow-up, because this is the thing that scares me the most. I can teach you to recruit. Shane being up here talking about how to set appointments, nobody better. You can get the appointment. You can show the plan. You can bring somebody in. But if you don't work with the people you bring in, it's just going to churn. And that's not how we make money. That's not how we help people. So what I want to make sure is that you're doing a correct follow-up process in, a, in a, a number of different manners. Not just on customers, not just on prospect, prospects, but on business owners as well. We get excited when we recruit a new partner, right? Everybody's fired up. They're posting it. But you know what they don't post a lot of times is the work it takes after you recruit somebody. If I bring a new partner in the business, I sponsor Joan. See, that's when the work starts. The sponsoring is not the work. That's actually the easiest part of our business. The work is now setting up her uh, home meetings, setting up her appointments, making sure she's getting the trainings, making sure she understands what's going on. That's where, that's where the money is, is having her become successful, not on the fact that I brought her in. Bringing her in is 300 BB. That's all it is. Maybe she got crazy in order for her. Yet in this room, as I look around, I see a lot of people who I've been friends with from Decades, decades and a half, we've worked together because we took some time in the beginning to really work together. And that's why you're still here. And for the new people, that's hard to believe. People have been here four months, five months, six months. But at least a lot of people in our business, some have been here 17 years, 18 years, 16 years, 15 years, 14 years. And you keep going on because we put a lot of effort in, in the beginning to help them get started and do it right. And if you just bring people in and you don't put that time in, you're never going to have that, so you got to put the time in. And to try to give you a, an example. Let's say I brought Kay in, and I registered her. And Kay, you know, uh, you know, I know you're younger. You don't have a ton of money right now, and uh, you don't have to do any kind of ordering to your third month, okay? And that's 50 BB, 
I can do IBV. That's not a big deal right now. And just 50 BV. And then, you know, it probably costs you about 100 bucks or so. And then every month after that, you have to do ordering. But we'll see how you're doing. Okay, so I bring her in that way. How am I doing so far? Horrible. I just brought her in horrible. I'm, I'm apologizing for my business. So I bring uh, Joan in. And when I bring Joan in, I say, Joan, here's what we're going to do. We get you started. I, and this is what we did, right? Immediately want to do a wellness presentation, a product show, whatever you want to call it. I want you to invite over a whole bunch of people, and we're going to get you some customers. And then we're going to schedule the next week. We're going to schedule a presentation to talk about the business. So the people who don't come to the wellness one will invite to the business. But in the first couple of weeks, we're going to have a couple of presentations. The other thing I know is the people we invited can't make it. Let's book some one-on-ones and let's see how many appointments we can show right away. My goal is to get you moving products and getting new business partners as fast as possible. I am taking a whole different approach. And what I'm trying to show you is some of us are approaching this way out of weakness. And some of us are approaching this way out of strength. We need to approach out of strength with what we have. When you take a look, if I bring Joan in that way, <clears throat> she does a wellness event, she moves 200 BV. Then what happens? Because we're doing these appointments, she gets activated. That's 600 BV of new people coming in. So what do I do with them? I'm going to repeat it because I can't expect her to do it yet. She's going to be with me. She's going to be learning. But that's 400 BV from two more uh, wellness events. Do I get credit on the 400 BV? This is really important. Yeah, I do. Now, again, reorders from the first wellness event or the second one, and then her transfer buying hits. So here we've done 350 BV. Here we've done 500, 1,100, 1,500, 1,750 in the same amount of time because of the way I approached it. And this is where when Shelly talked about it or when we've talked about all these different things, when we bring people in, we need to move fast with them. Because um, I'll tell you what happens, and some of you are in the business right now, or maybe we're in this position coming here today. You're in the business a month, two months, three months. You don't really do much of anything during that period of time. And all of a sudden you start to do what? You start questioning whether the business works. If business works, 400 plus people are million dollar earners, hundreds, tens, and thousands of people who are earning substantial uh, uh, incomes. So it works. There's no doubt on that. Same plan, same company, different people. It works. So the difference is how do we set people up and how do we get them going? And that's why I've spent so much time talking about doing this railway. By the way, you notice when I said we got down here with the two new people, I don't give them 60 days and I'm never working with you again. I hear some people say some crazy stuff. Like, you got 60 days or 90 days and I'm never working with you again. Hey, I got people in my business been in 15 years I still work with. If I need to, I need to. If they need help, they need help. Do I want them to become self-sufficient? Yes. Does everybody do it at the same time? No. I'm a realist in the business. Okay? And that's what you have to be. Um, let's go on. How do you do – how do you – Go ahead. Well, I want to make a point, too, that I've also seen somebody do the HVP or do the wine and wellness, but in three months of the first quarter, I've never seen them at a UVP. Right. I've never seen the, the, the sponsor, the leader, has to be at those things in order for the, the, those people to come in. You know well, what well, Lisa just said, she's seen where um, somebody did do an HVP or did do a wellness presentation, but then you never see them at a UVP or you don't see them at the local seminar. And a lot of times that's because whoever – uh, registered them, didn't didn't do the same thing with them, didn't didn't go themselves. Because here's what I know: if you're not, if Kay's going to a UVP, yes, she's going to tell you to go on Tuesday night. Right. You know why? Because she's there. If she is not going, I'm going to tell you what she's not going to tell them. She's not going to say to go because she can't say go to what she's not going to. Does everybody understand that? She can't say go to international convention, buy a ticket if she hasn't bought one. See, there's a, there's a a dynamic that you have to understand in our business, and it's that you have to do it first for the others to do it with you. You have to lead from the front and go where they haven't gone so they'll go with you. You can't say, I'm going to do it when they do it. You have to make the decision to do it and get there. Um, the other thing is it's just not who you sponsor. That's a big thing. I mean, uh, a lot of people you know, th think they know that I sponsored Shelly. 
right? We worked together how many years, Shelly? 17 years? Yeah. I didn't sponsor Shelly. A lot of people don't know that. They think I did. Someone else sponsored who's out of the business. Silly. <laughs> right now having a beer with my sponsor complaining about life. <laughs> right? And the, but I identified her as someone who was going to build. I came in. I worked through him to get to her. And that's what you have to do a lot of times. If you have to work through somebody to get to the people who really want it. I, I've heard people say, well, I, I'm not going to work with them because I didn't sponsor them. That's about as dumb a statement as I've ever heard. And the reason I'm saying that is because do you get 100% of the BV? Yes. 100% of the BV. So it doesn't matter whether you sponsor them or not. Treat them like they're your own if they show the desire to want to build the business. Anything else? Okay. What's the easiest way to get people started right? Getting started guidance is the easiest way to do it. And I, I'm going to tell you, this comes to every person. It's downloadable as well. Uh, and I only want to talk about one page, really. Because they'll say, well, yeah, but it's like 10 pages. I get overwhelmed. All right. This is, we just updated the Getting Started Guide. So if you don't have it, you might want to download it. <clears throat> when you open it up, inside page is right here. It says, I will follow a 12-month business plan. If I'm doing this with Kay, I have Kay check that off. Not me. She checks it off. Kay, Kay can you commit 8 to 15 hours per week? She says, yes, I have her check it off. Can you purchase a ticket to the next scheduled national meeting training seminar? Ticket? Well, I know you can because I already sold it to you before we started this process, so great. Um, shopping annuity, convert spending and earning. Visit shoppingannuity.com, download and complete the shopping annuity assessment and shopping annuity workbook. So, okay, we've talked about this. Did you get that done yet? You did. Perfect. Let's check that off. What if she hasn't? Great, let's do it together. Let's go there right now and get it done so you have it. Um, complete the shopping advisor on my shop.com site um, and listen to some uh, a couple audios per week. So boom, we're checking, 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 checking through that. Next slide that comes up is uh, enter important independent shop consultant dates, unfranchised business presentations on these dates. Okay, our business presentations are on Tuesday. So here's what I want you to do. I want to make Tuesday your night to work. I know you told me how busy you are in your career, but can you set Tuesday aside to be a work night? Okay. That's how I talk to people. Because I need her to come every Tuesday until she gets mad enough that she doesn't have somebody with her. I need her to learn to show the plan by being in there. I need Lisa and I have said this for 18 years. I know a lot of the leaders in this room have seen it. The people who stop coming to the UVPs, most of them, not all, because some will stay because of products and different things, but they sort of just drift away, and, and less and less happens because they're not around the people anymore. So we try to get them in a good good environment and doing that. Uh, the new new franchise owner training, K is going to be uh, in a couple weeks with Tom Dombro, great trainer. Can I... Can we get this set up for you? Are you available that day? That's a Thursday or whatever it is on that day. Boom. She says yes. We put on. If she can't, I already know the next one. And we put that in. Now some people say, well, I just have my people do it online. Can you have them do the new one, franchise owner and basic five training online? Yes, you can. Is it equal to or the same as being in the classroom? No. If you want to have them do it online, what I would tell them is do it online. But you have to go to the class with me because I want you to be there with me to see this. You understand the online training was put together really for people who don't have any training systems in their area. What we have uh, for everybody who's here is a great training system to be able to use. And the online one can just enhance it so that when they get there, they already have an idea of some of the things going on. Basic 5 training, ECCT training. How fast should someone get to an ECCT training? Right away. I mean, it, it, I get all the time someone will call and say, hey, uh, can you have somebody hold an ECCT in this area because I'm about to hit a check. My people are going to lose a check. And I'll look back and I'll say there were eight last year. Your person's been in the business a year and a half. And now you want me to call a trainer and ask them to do a training for your one person. It takes six hours. I'm like, really? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, sorry. They're going to have to drive or fly somewhere. I'm not going to do that to somebody. 
So what do we need to do? We need to get our people to those trainings right away and get them through all three. Then we've got local seminars, international convention. You know, I hope you guys got the, I loved uh, our speakers came up and talked about being at World Conference for the first time. I hope you got it. Then, then you need to get those tickets for that event to be there. Find a way to do it. There is, then this is the last part, which becomes the biggest part. <coughs> Schedule product preview. Schedule home presentation. Create a possibility. Schedule an appointment to do calls with your senior partner. If you did the three things that I just went through, the three sections of this page, just this, <coughs> with every new business partner, just that page, how many of your business partners would be way ahead? And that's all we got to look at right there. I mean, does, does this start to make it nice to know it's, it's simple to be able to put it together? It puts it all together for us. I mean, we want to get them in front of people as fast as possible. The faster you get people in front of it, the better their chances. If, if Kay sees me show the plan four times, do you think she becomes better at showing the plan? And she gets it by, it's like by osmosis, by being around, she becomes better at it. If somebody's interested, she starts to get uh, more, more interested herself. JR used to call it getting people in before they could get out. Does that make sense? Deeper than they could get before they could go. Because see what happens is if I bring in Lisa, Lisa brings in Joan, Joan is Lisa's friend. Lisa now has to pay attention on how to do the business. Even if she didn't start off that way because she doesn't want to do that to her friend. So she starts paying attention. By the time she starts paying attention, she starts making money. Everything starts making a lot more sense. Uh, how long do you follow up with a potential business partner? Four and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know my, my answer to that is un until they get started or they tell me not to. Yeah. Until they get started or until they tell me not to. I've got people I've been following up with. I might have somebody on the webinar right now I've been following up with for a couple of years. Yeah. If you are on there <laughs> and you know who you are. <laughs> Isn't it going to make or break me whether you get started? You need it. And that's how I approach it. It's not a bad thing. If he's not ready, he's not ready. When he is ready, we'll work together. But I'll follow up. I'll let him know what's going on. I'll keep in touch. I'll always be kind. I'll always be nice. And when he's ready, he's ready. If it's, How long? Be honest. Because this is where people, oh, I followed up for like two years. I've been working on that for two. How much time did you really spend? A phone call every month or two. Hey, how you doing? Oh, you're still busy, Sammy. I know you've been crazy at work. Not the right time. Can I call you back in a month or two? Yeah. That's following up. It's not like you're spending all this time doing it. So I'll follow up until they say, and I've got a friend, Rudy, Lisa knows. Oh, I keep saying to Rudy, he's, he's forever, you know what I'm talking about. He's been saying forever he wants to look at the business, and he came to a UVP, and he's like, I'm going to get started, and he doesn't get started. And I'll call him and say, Rudy, you're my friend. It doesn't matter to me either way. I don't want to bug you anymore. He's like, no, no, I'm serious. I'm really serious. <laughs> and then three months later, I call him up, Rudy. <laughs> it's the same thing over and over. It's like he just, he can never pull the trigger, but he doesn't want to be released. So it's, it's okay. I'll make a call every once in a while, say, hi, how are you doing? You just never know what can happen in this in this business. What? No, Jose. it's not Jose. <laughs> uh, these are a couple uh, letters that are going to be posted on that site that Lisa has put together. I think Lynette started them. Lynette did these, put the, the main parts of them together for follow-up to customers. And uh, it's, a, it's a great way to, a great thing to send along to a customer to let them know what they're doing. So they'll be on the site so you can have these and take a look at them. Uh, and this one says, my name is Lisa Winkley, your shop.com customer, uh, customer manager. I want to introduce myself and thank you for registering as a preferred customer. And it goes on, it's got the shop buddy link, uh, the video on it, it's got uh, the shop.com, it's got shopping annuity video, it's got some different things, it's got the 10% off on there. But again, we need to communicate with our customers, right, and share with them some things. We may have to do it over and over. Yeah. All you gotta, yeah, all you got to do is keep it in a file, copy and paste and personalize to make it really simple to be able to follow up 
uh, with that. And there's one from Modus Cosmetics, same way. What? And thank you, Lynette, for, for doing that. All right, so we've covered a lot of material today, right? So here's what it comes down to. If you're still looking for that one person to change your life, you got to take a look in the mirror. No matter how good any of these trainers were, they can't do it for you. They can put you in a position to do it. So if you want to change it, and, I, and there's people here who have changed their lives drastically. If you want to be one of the next one to do it, you got to decide to do it. It's, it's that simple. you got to lead from the front. We talked about if you want to, if, if you want to uh, have a great organization, you have to be a great leader. Don't keep waiting for someone else to lead you. Get out there. You're in a great organization. You're on a great team. You're in a great area. But you step up and, and go after it, too. It's a great, great way to build. And focus on what we've always focused on, income producing results. Use and sell the products. I think now you have a great idea about the shopping annuity and what it's going to do for us from a business standpoint. Uh, share the business. Sell tickets. I think we got that across today well, didn't we? And teach your team by doing it with them, doing everything with them. Here's what I want. The name of the training today was what? Do something more. And all that means is maybe you make one more call per day when you decided you weren't going to pick up the phone. One more plan per week. Uh, one more grand opening or one more HPP or one more product show per week or per month. More than what you're doing now. Schedule it. Because if you don't schedule, nothing happens. <clears throat> one more training per month. Don't be the people go to a train. You, you know, I, I did my new unfranchise owner basic five two years ago. I never need it again. I got to tell you, it's updated constantly, as you guys know. And you do need it. As some of you probably are going to walk out of here today and say, wow, did I need this? You, we just, I, I talk to Shane about this a lot. As much as I love technology, and I love it, I'm very much into it, I dislike some of it. And what I dislike is people think they can build the business without ever getting together with other people. Because this is what it's really about for me. It's all of us being together. It's getting to see people, get to talk to them. That's what the business really comes down to in the long run. The, the technology helps us do all that in a much easier way. For the people who have been able to watch online, that's incredible. But bottom line is you need to get and get to international convention and be there so that you're touching. You would fly into regional. If you're watching this, you got a free training. So take that money and put it towards your regional ticket and get there. Hear me, people online? <laughs> All right. uh, do one more shopping assessment in your group or with your customers. One more person to the regional. One more person to the next local. One more person to the international convention. Whatever it takes, do one more thing. That's all it is, right, Tom? The business has always been just do a little bit more and you're going to get there a lot faster. Be a doer, not a thinker. I would say if I could say one thing about myself, this has always been me. I don't always think everything through completely, but I get a lot done. I can tell you as a company, we don't sit and, have, and analyze everything in the world. A lot of times people say, well, why did they do that? Because we, we know if you don't take action, you never learn. So we do things, and that's what, what you have to do. There's a saying we've said forever, do the work, you'll make the money. Today we talked about what the work is, and the work's actually pretty fun, isn't it? So do the work, you'll make the money. Here's the moral of the story. I always end every... Uh, seminar with this to be thankful for what you for what you have. I think that's what we all have to start with uh, Be creative be innovative think differently and positively when life gives you a hundred reasons to cry Show life that you have a thousand reasons to smile uh, Today for Lisa and I you guys are a thousand reasons uh, Face your past without regret handle your present uh, with confidence you guys should be confident uh, prepare for the future without fear and always remember the choice is yours. It's up to you where you want to go with this and what you want to do with it. It's really yours. Um, guys, my favorite movie is It's a Wonderful Life, and it really is. So thanks so much for sharing this day with us. We appreciate you coming in. Uh,